Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. This is the $650 ATC 200M and I'm gonna see if this one perhaps will come back to life. Uh, for 650 bucks, I paid too much for just parts, so I'm hoping we could get this thing running. We got a lot to work on, so let's get started. When I was looking at this all-terrain vehicle, there's a few cues I pick up to how much trouble I'm in or not in. Obviously, missing one of the bolts here is a cue that you have trouble, but when you see that the cap is still here on the uh, timing chain adjuster, I have yet to get one where I've had the cap that I couldn't bring the engine back to life. So let's uh, let's break into this. I mean, we'll get this off and see if this thing jumped time or what its what its problem is. So somebody was up here messing around. I'm not sure why. This is the spark advancer, and it's supposed to be hooked right to the cam. Um, you got a bolt there, but then you also have this little pin, right? These pins, <laughs> they're like three bucks each, and then you got to pay the postage. So I ordered a few of them. It's real common to lose them. So as I'm doing that, you, you could just see it's loose. So I got to take the plate off that contains the pulse generator. And then I could see what's going on. At that point, I could also start um start seeing some other stuff as a matter of fact we'll probably get this whole cover off take a look at the timing chain yeah they got a lot of the wire harness intact here so hopefully with a little luck this thing will surprise me and come back to life let's see how quickly we could take this all apart recoil right i already undid all the bolts so, recoil off. You're going to have to take this cap off to see what your timing looks like. Right, outer cover, two Phillips off. Right, you got to take um, two Phillips here. Right, you get this off. When this comes off, it's very... I don't know if you guys could see it right there. There's a pin that's really easy to lose. And particularly when you slide this outer cover off, it's easy to lose that pin. I recommend taking it out of there. Use a magnet. Um, and then keep it on the magnet because you saw how tiny they are. Uh, very easy to lose. Once again, take that off, right? Two eight millimeters. You're going to have to get these caps off to check the timing, right? So I already loosened those. And once you do all that, you're going to have to check the engine timing, right? There's no use going any further with this if your engine timing is shot. What I'm trying to do is get this thing to top dead center on the compression stroke and um, make sure the timing didn't jump or anything didn't happen. First of all, the timing chain is really pretty nice and tight, so we like that. That's a good thing. Um, and I believe I have this thing top dead center on the compression stroke. Um, because, you know, I, I spun it around a few times and you want to make sure when you're on the compression stroke that if you turn the crank one way or the other quite a ways that both valves stay closed, right? Um, remember on the compression stroke, the piston is coming up and you have both valves closed right because you're um you're trying to compress the air and fuel mixture 
Remember, when you cross the top and you start on your way down, just as you're crossing the top, you fire just before you cross the top. You fire, right? And you want both your valves closed so your, your piston comes down with no problem. So anyway, um, I believe I have it there. And if you listen to your exhaust valve, it's pretty loose. But if you listen to your intake valve, you don't hear anything. So the intake valve is too tight. So I got to loosen that up a little bit. By the way, this is the, um, the advance, the spark advance. And you see how it has that little notch there? And if you recall, right, the pulse generator is right on top. And if you line up that little notch, right, everything's exactly where it should be. Some of these advancers have two of these um, keyways. And those are really bad because you can put them in 180 out, right? This one will only go in one way and settle, right? That way. If you got two of them, you could put it in like that. And remember... This thing doesn't fire on every spin of the crank, so um, that's just something to be aware of. By the way, this Advancer is in really um, pretty decent shape, right? You don't, the springs are there, everything's there as it should be. The Advancer itself is worth some halfway decent money. So, um, what did I do? Once again, I spun this around. I made sure we're at top dead center. They were nice enough to put a little alignment mark on it. I also use the old fashioned, I use something flexible in my case wire. And when I'm on top dead center, as I'm moving the crank just a little bit, you can feel the piston kind of um, pushing on the wire and you make sure it's right to the top. So I made sure that was true. I made sure once I was there that as I did rock it back and forth, the valves stayed closed for, you know, a good quarter turn. Remember, if you're on the top of the uh, intake stroke, the second you move it a little bit, your intake valve will open, right, in one direction. And if you kind of spin it the other way, right, your exhaust valve <laughs> will open, right? So you, you want to make sure you get to the top of the, uh, of the compression stroke to do all this timing work. So um, I'm sure you can look in there and with the right light and the sun not on it, you'll see the timing marks. Um, that's something you could also use, but... Seeing as they gave me that one right there, I'm happy enough to use it. So everything appears to be where I want it to be. And now it's just a matter of, um, of getting it set up. There should be a little circle. Yeah, there it is. If you look real close, you see the circle on the other side of the bolt. And you can see that's lined up right with that also. Um... Okay, what am I going to do now? Um, I'm going to loosen up the intake valve there and make sure it gets slappy happy like this one. Right, I'm even going to loosen up the exhaust just a little bit. And then we're going to start putting everything back together, right? We're going to put the caps back on. We're going to put the plate on it. Um, we're going to put the keyway in. Well, actually, yeah, we're going to put the keyway in. We're going to put the advance, then we're going to put the outer plate, and that'll all be happy. We're going to put that back on. I have to go sniff around for a recoil. I'm not sure if I have a recoil. I have to check the starter, see if this starter is any good. Maybe we could get away with with no recoil, recoil for the start on this thing. I also got to sniff, sniff around a bit for a carburetor. Now I really don't want to be too crazy hung up on it, but once again, listen. The intake was crazy tight. 
I think it was adjusted just completely wrong. So who knows, maybe with some luck, this puppy's got compression and it'll actually start up and run. I think I'm showing you the little key there. I recommend don't put it in unless you have this cover. That way if you drop it, it kind of lands here rather than going into the engine. Chances are when they took this off, right, that seal popped it out of there and they lost it forever. And then they were just sunk, right? There wasn't a lot they could do unless they bought a new one. Here we are. Everything is as it should be, right? That's all moving real nice. Now it's just a matter of putting it all back together. Okay, we just did a couple of different things. We made sure once again we were right at top dead center, right? Both my valves are loose. See that line there? See that line there? See how I line those up, right? Put a bolt in. So everything's set up properly. Um, I might need to advance this a little bit more, right? It has its own mechanical advance. I'm also going to be using um, a China CDI unit, which um, kind of has a built-in advance, so that's kind of a double advancey thing. <laughs> so um, I just I just wanted to set it up close enough to work. I think this plate is actually this should be turned back until you hit the fire line on the flywheel and this should be set there so I'm a little bit behind I'm a little delayed but um, I'm going with it that way they start easier that way and I, I won't be getting theoretically full power but I I could adjust that later right it's just two bolts and loosen those two notice on this thing a few other things I noticed it when I bought it but um that the uh, it's got the right cap bolts there once again this is on those are good things so let's hope once again we can get this thing to fire up so <laughs> seems like what they worked on they kind of messed up yeah I got a little play in the tail here too I think that's bearings I don't I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's the hubs. The other one, the hubs, a little loose. This one feels like the bearings are a little loose. Just something quick. If your bearings are loose, don't be uh, doing donuts and gravel. It takes those bearings out real quick. Okay, it's put back together again. No spare parts. I don't expect to find. Right, black goes to the frame. Starter. I like it. Let's put a compression gauge on it, see if we got any compression. Then we'll see if we can't get this thing to start. Here we go. I think, uh, I think that's not so good. Two PSI. <laughs> <laughs> that's not so good at all and we know the valves are closing so I'm gonna oil it up see if we get anything else out of it but wow talk about wiped dry compression zero Wet compression. not much more that ain't good boy I'm really surprised surprised it's that bad I wonder if I don't have a um, one of the valves isn't is it banged up um, it's the timing chain doesn't look that bad or anything maybe they misadjusted the valves and one of them got banged on I don't know I'm I'm surprised it's that low I've Given the timing is good, I'm really surprised that's low. Let's spend a couple of moments troubleshooting it. Maybe we could figure this out. I wired the crank to 
top dead center compression stroke once again you could kind of tell you're there also because as you're rocking it back and forth there's no spring tension on it from the valves so it's easy to go through top dead center when you're on the compression stroke anyway so I have the spark plug um, air adapter from the compression tester in there you can see I have it plugged into my hose hose into the compressor now I'm just gonna crack this Seems to be leaking out of the intake or the exhaust. I'm going to turn the air up just so we can hear it a little better. Seems to be leaking out of both. Yeah, this thing, uh, this thing, the valves are shot. Interesting. This is the, uh, you guys might not believe it, but this is the first one that I've really had that uh, has come in so low on the compression. So where are we with this thing? The nice thing is I do have an electric starter that functions. This motor also is going to have to come off and we're going to have to see what's going going wrong up in the uh up in the head. This exercise for the you for you guys that uh that joined me for the making of this video. I hope you you all saw a lot of nice troubleshooting techniques <laughs> right um i was i was kind of hoping when i found that intake valve when i found that it was too tight that the lash was completely out of the uh out of the rocker there i when i found that i i really let myself hope i'm like ah maybe i'm gonna pull this one out but um it doesn't look it it doesn't look it it looks like I am gonna to have to go into the engine such is life you know you get easy ones and you get some some hard ones you know I don't know what the prices are like around you guys for these for these things they're they're like crazy high there's a guy still I think it's one of this one of four of these that were together these two and um, a 200 ES that's completely parted out and God knows where it is and um, and a 200 M that's still still kind of on Facebook I think the four of them were kind of created together or swapped parts between all of them anyway that guy's still at 1450 on that so it strikes me as a lot of money I mean it's a little better than this um well quite a bit better than this but still 1450 he hasn't sold it there um so i'm thinking it can't be worth 1450 or he would have sold it and the guy he bought it from would have sold it for 1650 and that guy would have sold it for 1850 right if it was a steal at 1450 it would have sold so i'm i'm thinking that's kind of all all they could be worth I'm thinking more like a thousand dollars give or take a little bit depending on what they look like a thousand dollars plus a few hundred if they're real pretty a thousand dollars minus a few to several hundred depending on what the tires and plastic and everything else is like how well they run so there we are um this has a pro-am high track front tire on it it does have some weather cracking I'm wondering if that that isn't the original front tire and if that's the case this thing really doesn't have that many miles on it yeah I'm surprised the valves 
the valves are leaking. I guess when the engine's off, then we'll really know what's going on. So I have um, two of these engines to pull off and uh, and look at. I also got to kind of go through the hoard and see what parts I have uh, floating around. Maybe one engine could do donor for two or the engine on the other 200M. Maybe I could pull the head off of that one. Um, and the piston's okay on this one. Uh, then I, I can just replace an entire jug. Uh, once again, I gotta go through my spare parts, see what I have, and see what's available. Okay, once again, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I feel as if I know a lot more about this, this three-wheeler than I did before I started. I need you all to keep your feet down, your heads up, and get out and enjoy each and every day. Bye now.